Chapter 27. Cracker raised her nose toward the empty sky and smelled nothing special, saw nothing special, and felt nothing special. She whimpered and moaned. Then she started trotting again toward Benoit. She found a lot of water to drink today, but now her stomach was upset and she was hungry and lonely. She stopped again, forgetting all her sad thoughts. Just a few leaps away lay a fat gray lizard. She took a step forward and the lizard started scurrying off. Cracker sped after it. She forgot all else for the moment. She wanted to catch this lizard. Her muscles felt full of energy and her hunting heart found a reason to live. Simply in chasing this lizard. The lizard was fast, but she felt like it was practically standing still. When it tried to climb a tree, she leapt through the air and managed to swipe her paw against its body. It began running again and she chased it. When she was just about to jump on it for a kill, it stopped suddenly and turned around, hissing at her. She paused. She had no idea if it was dangerous or not. With humans, she always knew immediately if she could take them or not in a fight. But this was something new. She wasn't afraid, though. On the contrary, she felt almost deliriously happy. She snarled. The animal hissed. She pounced, planning to land by its side so she could hit it with her paw before grabbing its throat. But it whipped around so quickly that it was facing her again and they were back to where they started. She tried again with the same results. Then she just ran straight at it, hitting his side with her paw and grabbing its throat when it fell over. Her mouth filled with blood. She whipped her head back and forth, over and over in a frenzy. The blood smell was incredibly strong. She ripped at the stomach and swallowed the strong smelling guts. She'd never tasted anything so good. She ate until she was full and then she lay down. The jungle was warm, and it felt good to sleep. When she woke again, it was already getting dark. She was full of optimism as she set off, occasionally stepping around one of the things that Rick had taught her to avoid. She would find him. Sometimes she moved of her own volition, that means choice. Other times she was pulled by a force. Her stomach rumbled constantly, but when she reached Benoit and saw all the activity, she broke into a gallop. She stopped just outside the camp and watched the men at the base. These men were all like Rick, but they weren't Rick. An American soldier yelled out, hey, that looks like a scout dog. Another soldier said, check her ear. The soldier walked cautiously toward her. She growled, but softly and stepped back. Rick had taught her to tolerate guys like him. Even though Rick was gone, all that training they'd done together made her know that it was important to tolerate certain types of people. So she stood very still as the man checked her ear and said, yep, she's one of ours. 72 AO. Cracker studied the soldiers. They were all dressed just like Rick. Cracker, Cracker didn't know for certain whether these new events were good or bad. She just recognized the uniform of the man who now picked up her leash as the same as one of the guys like Rick wore. Uniforms were easy to recognize. The guy seemed like a friend, but she didn't long for him the way she longed for Rick. She didn't understand any of this. She just wanted Rick. The man started talking like Rick. Easy, easy girl. So she sat, though she growled very softly. The one man said to the other, she must have gotten loose somehow. By the look of her coat, it's been a while. The man gazed into the jungle. Of course, even a day in the wrong jungle can get you looking pretty bad. He patted her head. I got a shepherd at home. Cracker thought he was an average petter, but she could tell he was a good man. Good man. The men walked off, Cracker healing with the man holding her leash. She followed them because now they were all she had. They put her in a windowless room with a bowl of warm water. She paced and paced, urinated on the floor and paced more, and raked the door. Finally, the good man returned with another. Everything's pretty disorganized, he was saying. He patted her again. We couldn't find her records, but she's got the tattoo, so she's definitely one of ours. What happens to her next? said the other man. The first man lowered his voice as if Cracker would understand if he talked soft wouldn't understand if he talked softly. She listened intently though, of course she couldn't understand, for sending a few of the dogs home if they passed the health exams. But they're either giving this rest to the South Vietnamese army or putting them down. The army's putting down its own dogs? Yeah. It's the Vietnamization man. They're leaving behind or destroying unnecessary equipment. So what do we do with her? There are a couple of scout dog platoons here right now. They just stood down. We'll give her to one of them. 
Cracker looked eagerly back and forth between the two men. She knew they were talking about her. She stood up and wagged her tail. She licked the good man's hand. He and the other man didn't look at her, but rather into the wall, as if they saw something special there. She looked at it, but she just saw a wall. Heck of a war, one said. The next few days went okay. She got kenneled and fed, and somebody even brushed her. One of the original men who'd found her and petted her sometimes. Came and petted her sometimes. She kept waiting to see Rick again, but mostly all she saw was a bunch of bored guys throwing food into her kennel and occasionally cleaning it out. 